the most serious adverse drug reactions should be a high priority for you to report. This is true even of well-known reactions and even in cases where you suspect clinically that a drug has caused harm, you don't have to be certain beyond reasonable doubt. The most serious adverse drug reactions should be a high priority for you to report. This is true even of well-known reactions and even in cases where you suspect clinically that a drug has caused harm, you don't have to be certain beyond reasonable doubt. There are standard definitions of serious reactions, that is, reactions that have serious consequences. The most obvious of those reactions of any sort that cause or come close to causing death or serious disability. Others, such as drug-induced congenital abnormalities, are also very important. Here we give some examples of serious reactions affecting different organ systems. The list is not exhaustive. If the suspected reaction causes serious harm, please report it. Our first case is of a young mother who started having brief episodes of unconsciousness while taking the antihistamine terfenidine for hay fever. The ECG when she was fully conscious showed sinus rhythm. It also showed a QT interval nearly 50% longer than normal. The long QT interval predisposed her to torsade de pointe, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, which caused her unconsciousness. In her case, it was a consequence of taking fluconazole for thrush while still taking terfenidine. Fluconazole inhibits the breakdown of terfenidine, which is now no longer available. Here is a list of some medicines with the potential to prolong the QT interval and increase the risk of torsade. The second case is of a middle-aged man who had episodes of ventricular tachycardia after a heart attack. He was treated with the antiarrhythmic amiodarone. After some months he became increasingly short of breath. This is his plain chest x-ray. A CT scan confirmed honeycomb lung, that is, changes typical of pulmonary fibrosis. In his case, the amiodarone-induced pulmonary fibrosis was fatal. This rather longer presentation gives examples of serious adverse drug reactions. Our next case is of an elderly woman treated with the potassium channel opener nicarandil frangina. She developed painful perianal ulcers, which were resistant to local treatment. Surgery was considered, but the ulcers healed completely when the treatment with nicarandil was stopped. In this case, she narrowly escaped surgery. Not all patients are so lucky. Four out of 12 patients in this series from Sheffield had made a surgery before the cause of the ulcers was established. Serious cutaneous adverse reactions, scars, are an important cause of morbidity and can be fatal. Stevens-Johnson syndrome and its more severe form toxic epidermal necrolysis are commoner in patients of Asian or African heritage. The reaction commonly occurs 10 days to 10 weeks after initial exposure to a drug and many drugs can cause these reactions. Antimalarials, antibiotics and anticonvulsants figure prominently. Our fifth case concerns a man who took a teaspoonful of white crystals sent by a relative from overseas as treatment for prostatism. He at once felt burning in his throat and soon became anuric. The anuria was due to acute tubular necrosis the white crystals proved to be mercuric chloride. The man required dialysis for five weeks before his kidneys started working again. Here is a list of some important drug causes of acute renal failure. All five of the reactions we've discussed were serious. Some were well known. One was due to an unlicensed traditional medicine. One was due to a drug interaction. We welcome reports of all serious adverse drug reactions 
even if well known, and whether to licensed or unlicensed medicines.